Hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying the conference so far. So this will be a yet another best practice talk on instrumentation and alerting using Prometheus. And I'm sure you have seen similar talks and perhaps uh, better ones. But anyhow, this will be my take on it. Uh, so uh, I have couple, uh, collected a couple of best practices as a set of rules and I'm going to share those with you in this presentation. So before I start, I want to make something clear. None of these are like mine. The only novel thing I'm going to be presenting here is the mere collection of these metrics, these ideas. Uh, so first, who I am. So my name is Kemal and I work for Red Hat as a software engineer. I work at OpenShift Observability Platform team and in this team we are building a platform uh, to collect the observability signals like such as uh, metrics, logs, tracing and profiling. Uh, also, uh, as a team, we are we have SRE responsibilities, and meaningly we are on call uh, for the platform that we are building. Uh, so the rules that I'm going to share with you today, we are actually applying that in our daily lives on production systems. Uh, I'm also a Thanos maintainer and recently started to contribute to Prometheus. Uh, yeah, achievement unlocked for me. Uh, besides the observability and monitoring topics, I am also passionate about distributed systems and databases. And by the way, in this picture I'm on vacation and like normally I don't look that much happy. So let's start. So what is Zen? Uh, when you check the dictionary, or in this case the Wikipedia, you get a definition. So Zen emphasizes a rigorous, self-restrained meditation practice, insight into the nature of the mind and nature of the things, and the personal expression of this insight's daily life, especially for the benefit of others. That's the formal definition. So from this formal definition to use in our context, I have derived a simpler one. A Zen is a collection of insights gathered from the daily life uh, to benefit others. So, I'm sure you have heard similar Zen ideas before. So, in this talk, I'm going to try to come up with a set of rules to fulfill this definition. The first and probably the most uh, popular of the Zens in software systems is the Zen of Python. It's uh, created 20 years ago uh, as a Python en enhancement proposal, PEP20, I believe by Tim Peters. In this document, he captured the engineering values behind Python in some humorous way. You can access these, uh, you can access these through the website or through the Python interpreter. There is an Easter egg in Python interpreter. So if you open up an interpreter and prompt and type import this, you would see same same rules that you are actually seeing here. So we also have similar initiatives in Go as well, right? So uh, which in this case is called Go Proverbs. Back in 2015, uh, Rob Pike has created these proverbs for a legendary talk that he gave in GopherFest. So these uh, rules, uh, they serve more or less the same purpose as Zen. However, proverbs are a little bit different than uh, Zen of Python rules. So what is a proverb? What makes it different? A proverb, by definition, is a short, well-known pity saying stating a general truth. So in our context, it is a pity saying that designed to reveal a deeper truth about the design of the language. So even though practically they are similar, they serve slightly different purposes. So proverbs are revealing intentions behind the design of Go. They require deeper understanding of the language. So in this sense, they are not the same as the rules in the design of Python, which is which they depend on the practical knowledge, practical usages of the language. 
And so luckily for us, now we also have the Zen of Go. Dave Cheney gave this great talk about the Zen of Go at Gofurk on Israel this year. He aimed to create a set of rules to convey the engineering values behind the Go. And he wanted them to be more beginner friendly. So in his talk, he also thinks about the ways to communicate these rules, right? So the life cycle of these rules. So he asked the questions like, how do we teach them? How do we enforce them? How do we evolve them? Of course, like after watching this, uh, this talk, this idea came to me. I mean, why don't we have the similar set of rules for Prometheus? Of course, like as none of my ideas, this wasn't as novel as I thought it is. Bjorn Rabenstein has already asked the same question and as an answer, he gave a talk about it, uh, about it at Berlin Prometheus uh, meetup a couple of years ago. Bjorn, in this talk, uh, told that he had the idea after he watched the talk by Rob Pike. And he had been collecting these proverbs for a while at the time that he gave this talk. So in that talk, he canonizes, canonized five proverbs. So these uh, proverbs are, goes like this. Like instrument first, ask questions later. Counters are, counters rule and gorgeous sucks. Uh, first the rate, then aggregate. This sounds pretty nice. Labels are the new hierarchies, and if you can graph it, you can alert on it. They are simple, they are poetic, and they are beautifully state, uh, stated and catchy. For me, uh, these rules are closer to the Zen than the Proverbs. So I decided to build up on them. Also, in this talk, we are jokes about he could be starting a tradition and someday somebody would add more rules and would build a website out of it. So here I am, delivering that promise and fulfilling that prediction. I give you the Zen of Prometheus. Following the path of Bjorn and inspired by Dave, Dave Cheney, I try to create a set of rules to help engineers to create like metrics and alerts for their services. And I also want, uh, wanted them to be beginner friendly. So here they are. Bold ones are the proverbs, by the way, the colored ones. Uh, I wanted, again, these rules to be catchy and beginner friendly. So as my teammate Matthias you might know you might know him as Meta Matze. Beautifully put, like these these rules should be explicit and concise enough to give the message in a conversation that you have in a conference hall day track, which we don't uh, have many of those uh, anymore because of the COVID situation. Uh, but like the description was really catchy for me, and uh, that's what I aim for. So I'm not going to go ahead and uh, read them one by one. Uh, but the, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to try to highlight a couple of those rules. I believe the most fundamental and the insightful ones. And the, for the rest, you can go to the website and read about them. Also, like uh, Bjorn has already explained the one he has canonized in depth in his talk. So you better watch, uh, watch it for those rules. Uh, that being said, I uh, can't just like start without repeating the first one that Bjorn uh, mentioned. Instrument first, ask questions later. So instrumentation is the key to understanding how our applications run and behave in action. So, also, like the, according to myths of Prometheus, Prometheus has started as an instrumentation library. So still, like the emphasis on instrumentation first, like this is the genesis claim uh, of Prometheus. So good software needs good instrumentation and it's not optional, it's just essential. So for that, 
start focusing on instrumenting your applications first. So spread the metrics liberally to later on to ask the proper question to gather insight, insightful measurements from your systems. Yes, one of the most important rules. So measure what users actually care about. Do you really think your users care if your database servers are down? Do they care about whether your CPU is saturated? Just no, they care about what they experience. So they care about whether they can access the page that they have requested and whether they see the refresh result or not. So rather than thinking in terms of those, you should think in terms of latencies, availability and error rates while instrumenting your services and think about how you would measure your user's experience. To do that, always let your SLOs guide your instrumentation. If you don't know where to begin from, you can just use known frameworks like such as RED, USE, or the full golden, golden signals that they mentioned in the SRE, famous SRE book. Another important rule, cardinality matters. So every unique set of labels create a new time series. Remember that, use labels with care. Watch out what you actually put onto those labels. Do not put any unique identifiers into labels. Things can get out of control pretty much easily. Again, remember labels are multiplicative. And keep in mind that uh, you will have multiple labels on metrics, multiple target labels on your targets, and you will have multiple targets. So things could get out of control pretty quickly and nastily. And remember, when it comes to performance, it's almost always about one thing, and it's label cardinality. Yes, uh, this is actually, some of you may have realized, this is actually a meme. And one does not simply use histograms. Histograms are powerful. With a single histogram metric, you can monitor your HTTP service. You can build red dashboards out of it and meaningful alerts on top of those. However, histograms are not the easiest metric to use. Remember the Peter Parker principle. To ensure usefulness of your observations and correctness of your alerts, you have to come up with meaningful bucket layout. And creating a bucket layout for your histogram is a kind of an art form. So coming up with a bucket layout somewhat also conflicts with the first rule, instrument first and ask questions later. Because you need to have an idea about your latencies, your latency ranges before you even started to measure. So to circumvent this issue, you can take an iterative approach or you can use an event-based system to obtain your latency distributions and latency ranges first. So, as always, let your SLOs guide your bucket layout. Create boundaries that match matches your SLO boundaries. With that way, you can keep track of uh, your SLIs. The last but not the least, watch out your cardinality. The histograms underneath are just countered with labels where bucket boundaries used as labels. So be precautious while adding additional labels to your histograms. Remember, labels are mul multiplicative and they can easily get out of control. This should be a remedy to one of the most common mistakes we see in the alert creation. So symptom-based alerts for paging and cause base for troubleshooting. It doesn't matter if, you CP if your CPU is saturated, as long as your users don't notice that. Your paging alerts should be urgent, important, actionable and real. You wouldn't want to be woken up in the middle of the night for the problems would eventually go away by themselves. So 
Your alerts should represent either ongoing or imminent problems with your systems. And remember uh, what we talked about in the beginning of the talk about like measure what the users are actually care about. So for that, symptoms are a better way to capture problems more comprehensively and robustly with the less effort. So you should always, always be able to classify the problems into one of availability, latency, or correctness terms. So do that. That being said, include cause-based information in your alerts, but avoid alerting on them directly. Use them to troubleshoot your systems or debugging your problems in your production systems. As I told you at the beginning of the talk, I want this to be a community effort. I dream this would become an entry point for the beginners and the ones who seek the best practices. So feel free to contribute, add and change the rules. Any types of contributions are welcome. With that, that's it from me. Thanks for listening. Thank you. I think we already have you as a panelist. Yes, we do. So are there any questions? I'm monitoring both uh, chat here and also Slack. Okay, while well, waiting for questions, um, how how did your own perception of of the space change before and after um, thinking about uh, basically what was in the Prometheus ecosystem as as mantras as Sam? So, yeah, uh, I mean, before this, uh, there were like uh, official documentation pages uh, to collect uh, certain best practices. Uh, just like I wanted to be more uh, catchy. That's why like I come up with this like uh, proverbs or mantras. Actually, like most of them is coming from other sources. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, like. I just want to start an effort to just create a nicer entry point and maybe something that everyone can just point out and start from there. So we still have time for questions. Uh, one point that was on the chat uh, is that the uh, Kubernetes SIG observability is looking for more material like this. Uh, you should definitely contact them. I will. With my chair hat on, yes, that's actually a good point. Um, SIG observability will start creating um, best current practices documents. So there don't seem to be any more questions. So we as the panelists are, are tasked with coming up with questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, in your own experience or in your opinion, what would you say is the most important uh, aspect of, of what you just talked about? Like if you had to pick one or two specific things, what would those be? Yeah, I've already picked them. Uh, I emphasize them, but like the most uh, important one is uh, the user aspect. Yeah, when you instrumenting your application or when you're uh, creating uh, some alerts, you should always like focus on um, perspective from the user. So that's what matters. And uh, I guess that's the most important part. I have a question. Uh, so I assume you've started to use these uh, red method, use method type uh, uh, alerts for your infrastructure. What interesting problem uh, uh, or problems have you found because you added those alerts versus uh, traditional alerting thresholds? Uh, yeah, uh, mostly the most interesting one we come up with uh, with the latencies, I guess. Uh, that was the first indicator of uh, something uh, like uh, burning or started to uh, burn up. Uh, also, like um, 
the one thing also reduce the noise that we have in our alerts, right? When we focus those, and we had this alert sometimes just like they're flip, floppy or when you actually, your you know, the alerts can go off uh, after your uh, elastic infrastructure can handle them after just restarting. Uh, so this kind of reduced those type of things, uh, I may say. Thanks. By the way, thank you for your presentation. I like use that a lot. And yeah, there are a couple of items that directly comes from your uh, presentation, uh, Julius. There's a question from the audience. Um, you said that the center of Prometheus is to help people understand best practices of Prometheus in an easy to understand way. What are other non-obvious documentation or other things which you have found helpful in aiding your understanding of the project? I mean, besides the best practices, I found like uh, I already mentioned uh, the monitoring. Uh, the, there is a document called my, my monitoring philosophy. Uh, also, the SRE, uh, the famous site reliability engineering books, uh, they also helped. So uh, I use those sources as well, and I already mentioned them as resources uh, to build up this website. What do you advise as best what do you advise as best practices for deriving SLOs and SLIs? Use of black box, white box instrumentation of apps or a combination of those? I guess the combination of those. Uh, for like one example that I already given, I, I mean if you are aiming for certain uh, service level objective for your latencies, for example. Uh, you can align your buckets accordingly. Uh, this uh, is one of the like first principle that could help. And also like depending on your service, uh, you, uh, you can like uh, work on, uh, come up with an alerts and SLOs uh, depending on your error rates, individual error rates or uh, window, uh, multi-window uh, base uh, error rates. Uh, so there are certain uh, strategies that uh, you can start with. Uh, I mean, to understand all those things, uh, the, as I mentioned before, the, for the previous uh, question, the uh, SRE book is a nice place to start. And maybe in addition from my side, uh, one thing which I've been trying to, to get into the wider system and into the wider understanding, Everything, every service has a user. And especially if you if you provide services internally for your coworkers or whatever, um, they consume your service as something they build upon. So whatever your SLIs and your SLOs are, I like to call them the primary ones. And then anyone who depends on you has your primaries as the secondary. Because they basically help you inform about why your service might be hitting a wall. Of course, the services which you depend upon are obviously part of, of the whole story of your own services. So why those might not be completely actionable or imminently user-facing anything, anything which from the, from the perspective of who's providing a service to you is a useful signal when anything goes wrong with, with your own stuff. So having this, this dependency chain of services and also of the SLIs, SLOs, SLAs of those services is super useful as a mental model to figure out what you should be looking for first if your own stuff is having issues. I think Matthias is a panelist, so he can make that point himself, but I uh, know oh maybe he didn't yet. Um, so Matthias just adds, and your availability may not be higher than the services your, services, uh, your service depends on in almost all cases. Yes, this, uh, this is correct. So we still have a little bit of time and we can still take one or two questions. Yep, there's uh, two questions there in the Q&A app there. Oh. Having said near a while. Yes, uh, so the first one is, 
Yeah, while well, naming things is the hardest. <laughs> uh, are there any practices you found along the way in order to avoid unnecessary labels? What do you do to avoid label hell? Uh, yeah, for the naming things, uh, for starters, like uh, Prometheus has a really good best practices document on naming. I strongly uh, suggest that, uh, check it out. And for the labeling things, I'm like, uh, I'm also pretty new in this area. So uh, for the labeling part, I try to uh, check out the existing uh, monitoring tools, especially uh, if you have seen uh, monitoring mixins uh, out there. Uh, there is also a new website, uh, which I also mentioned in this best practices document. You can check out those mixins and especially like Kubernetes mixin or uh, the one on Prometheus, uh, the, those uh, kind of uh, give you a really good uh, idea about uh, coming, with, uh, coming up with the correct label sets. And also something which you can do is you can work your way backwards. You can you can think about how many services, how many endpoints, how many whatever will I be going to is raping. And then you can deduce by by how much your instance, your Prometheus instance can take, how much space do I have if assuming certain growth for a total amount of labels uh, to put on, on all my time series, which gives you a rough indication of, of how many you can do, which might help in determining what you can do. And the other question was, <laughs> what problems can bad labeling introduce? A fun one. Yeah. Yeah, the four starters, uh, the cardinality issue, uh, I, I, I already mentioned about that uh, in the presentation. I mean, uh, if you have uh, a label value that is actually uh, unbounded, uh, like a request ID or something, you can easily blow up your Prometheus system. And one other thing is like, uh, I mean, uh, you may like gen in general, you may end up with unnecessary labels that you don't use and you actually pay for as resources. Uh, so that would be the bad labeling thing. Uh, I can just come up, come up with on top of my head, but I'm sure there are more experienced people in here can also help up with this question. So I think the final one, um, Question about satellite SLIs. Which frameworks do you favor between red or use method, golden signals? And also there's a link from the SRE book which refer, uh, refers to availability, latency, quality, freshness, correctness, coverage, and durability. So which of those you personally prefer? Uh, for the services, uh, we mostly prefer the red one. And uh, if you are like uh, trying to uh, monitor or uh, create alerts for uh, deep things depend on resources we use uh, use and uh, I don't like these two kind of covers the four golden signals one so we prefer the first uh, two uh, to come up with our, our alerts and dashboards and the other part of the question is uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there is also a good part in the documentation of Prometheus about uh, coming up with the uh, right amount of like uh, what to instrument on uh, depending on your workloads. Like if you are like working on online systems, it's something else. But if you are working on a batch processing system that you can focus on other aspects of those things, uh, you I will again refer to the uh, Prometheus documentation for this. Thank you. Perfectly on time.